Hey, what's going on guys, it's Dave. I just wanna make a quick video about LXC configuration. Now that we've created LXC machines or containers, if I say machines a million times, forgive me, I think of these things as servers, even though they're not, they're really just uh, other environments set up around the same kernel that I'm already using, but it doesn't matter. These machines or containers have a pretty simple to understand configuration file format. I'll show you that in a second. But first I want to tell you, if you need to configure the install, the creation of the container, then you want to go to user share LXC templates. And here you can see all the templates. I've showed you these before, but these are really just shell scripts. So if we take a look at this, you can configure stuff that you need installed, like packages you need installed or other things you want to modify here if you're not using some configuration management tool like uh, Puppet or Chef to roll out your machines. And even if you're using something like that, um, you're going to want to install the like Puppet agent package. So I just want to make a quick side note for that. That being said, let's go to varlib LXC. You can see our existing containers. If we just change directory to an existing containers root file system directory, you can see you can see the root file system right in there. So if we say, uh, you know, list the root of us, that literally is what you see as root from inside the container sitting right there on your file system. So as a result, copying things into the container is very easy. Copying things out, hopefully, should be a little bit more difficult. In this directory that we're in right now, you can see an fs tab file and a config file. As you might expect, the fs tab file is empty. If we want to add additional mounts that are mounted at boot time, we can put them in there. But really what's interesting to us is the config file. By default, uh, I'll show you a, a default config file. Um, it's a Ubuntu machine. This is what a default config file looks like. The configuration format is key, LXC dot something usually, equals value, whatever your value is. So you can set, for example, where the root file system is kept, where your FS tab file for mounts is kept, the architecture. And then each new container gets one, by default, virtual Ethernet device, comes up on boot, and is attached to this LXC bridge that's automatically created when you install LXC. It does have a static MAC address, but you can see it doesn't have a static IPv4 address. That IPv4 address is given to it by the DHCP server that's installed when you ex install LXC, the package itself. So LXC generally will install some bridge software, set up a DHCP server that will give out IP addresses to any containers that come up. So one of the very first things you're gonna to wanna to do and that's what we'll talk about in this video, is sort of set up the basic network configuration that you want. It's very unlikely that you're gonna have production machines uh, with some kind of dynamic IP. So we'll set up your network and we'll set up boot order. We'll talk a little bit about groups. I think those are like the important basics that you need to know. For everything else, there's man5lxc container conf. There's also a system conf, I think. If you just do a man5lxc.conf, it'll tell you what other man pages to look in. But basically, you can see all of, or a lot of your configuration options here. And you can see we could pass in physical networks, all the network flags and details we can set. You can set the location and type of the rootfs. Like for example, you could run from an image file or a block device if you don't wanna run from a directory on the root on the host machine. You can set what kind of capabilities are dropped or kept. You could set app armor or SE Linux profiles for your container process to use. You can do ID mapping for unprivileged containers where you map user and group IDs, high user and group IDs from the host machine onto the container. So you can run UIDs and group IDs that the container thinks are privileged, which are actually not privileged on the host machine. And you, you've even got things like hooks, so scripts that can be run on events that happen to the container. You could run scripts on like before you start it, but after you run the start command, before it mounts its file systems, pre-mount, mount, start, clone, etc., etc., etc. I just want you to know there's a ton of options, and it's really worth 
looking at this man page to see what you can do. You can also limit resource use through C groups in this configuration file, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. That'll be another video, and we'll just talk about some basics there. In this video, we're going to just set up the very basics for our first container. Uh, just so you see, it's running right now. Neither container is being auto started, and you can see they're on some IP address that was given to them by the DHCP server. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the network and a couple other things. You can see I've started here. This is all the default stuff, and here's where my configuration options begin. I'm going to set a static IPv4 address, and you do that using CIDR notation, so you give the address. This is the same network, just a different IP. I'm going to start numbering these at 100. And it's a slash 24, so this is, these are the host bits here. Separated with a space, I've got the broadcast address here. And I'm going to say gateway, instead of giving the address of the bridge, I'm going to say auto. And auto means just use the bridge's IP as your gateway, and that should be fine. We also want to automatically start this machine. So when we boot our host machine, we want this machine, this container, to start as well. And we're going to pretend that this is some kind of infrastructure service on this machine. So we want other machines to wait for this thing to boot and start its services before they boot, because we're going to assume that other machines, other containers, depend on this container for some service. So we're going to say, after you start it, please delay by 15 seconds. And since this is important, we're going to set the start order and say 10. The higher this number is, the higher the priority it has in the order. So if I set this uh, another container to 100, the 100 will boot first, then the 99, then the 98, if there is one. You can, of course, have gaps in this. It's fine. So we'll set this as 10, and I've only got a couple of the machines that don't have any order set, so they'll automatically come behind this. We can also set a group. Now, this is a little bit tricky because this sounds like a really, really convenient thing, and it is, but it comes with a caveat, and that is once you set one or more groups, you can set more than one with a comma. Once you set one or more groups, this start auto option is ignored. So this will not automatically start unless you run auto start all or LXC start dash G and then the group name. So DNS or infrastructure. So again, once you set a group, auto start is ignored until you run it manually as a command. So this thing won't jump up at boot of your host machine anymore. So we're going to unset that, but that's good because you can start an entire group of machines at once. So if you've got, let's say, a couple different machines running infrastructure services, you can start them all at once, and that way you can kind of start them in waves. And inside of these groups, this order thing will still hold. So I'm going to do a delay of 15 seconds. It might be a bit much because containers usually start a lot faster than that, but I want you to be able to see how this thing comes up. Now, there's one thing we have to edit before we start this thing. So we're going to write this config file. And you can see everything's still the same. We haven't rebooted any of the, these machines. So on the next reboot, these containers will pick up the new configuration, although it's already picking up that it's set for auto start. We're going to set the second machine for auto start as well. LXC start auto one, good enough. You can see that picks that up too. And then what we'll do is we need to get into the first machine. So we'll do an LXC attach my first container because we're changing network settings on a machine that's already running and that has some config files that we need to change. This mystified me for the first couple minutes. ETC network interfaces. This is the problem. If you start this, matter of fact, I'll show you. If you start this machine now with the new network configuration, it still has ETH0 pulling down a DHCP address from the DHCP server. In addition to us setting a static IP 
in the configuration file outside the container. If we restart this thing now, <laughs> a root shell causes to hang on the stop. Um, if we list it again, it stops. And if we now just restart it, you can see it's now picked up two IP addresses. And we can actually ping it on both of those. So 10.03.170, the old address, the old lease it had with the DHCP server, it just picked that IP right back up again. And its new IP that it's supposed to have. 100, it responds there too. This is weird, and it's just because when you change one line of the config file, it's not going to go in and actually change the configuration files that are already set in the container. So we have to do that ourselves. So if we just simply attach to that again, uh, nano, we're going to comment this out. So ETH0 will still come up but it's not going to go looking for DHCP. We're going to save this, so we're commenting that line out, saving, and we could reload the interface, but I'm just going to power off, because what I want to do is show you the boot process. Okay. Okay. So both containers are stopped now. If I do LXC auto start, with an L, it just shows me what would be affected. So that's a really good way. If you've got a complex boot sequence that you want, you can run it with the dash L command and auto start will just list what would happen without doing anything. You can see my first container will start. There'll be a delay of 15 seconds. Then Ubuntu will start. So if we run, let's go back out and just say LXC auto start all. Are you ready for this? Gonna have to be quick. Fancy list. The first one's running. The countdown is going. The other one's still stopped. Countdown's still going. So the first one has its one IP, you can see. It's no longer looking for DHCP. Bam. Now the second one's started, and it should have an IP momentarily. There it is. So there you go. So that's how we did it. We set the order and the delay. My first container has a higher boot priority, so the order is a higher number, or any number takes precedence over order that isn't set. And it's got a delay of 15 seconds afterwards. So our second container will simply wait, then boot itself normally. Does that make sense? I think that, that about covers it for basic configuration. Again, if you just do man5lxc.config or lxc.container.config, you will see a whole slew of options that you have at your disposal. In the next video, we'll take a look at resource management, basic resource management. So you can, for example, manage how much memory your containers are allowed to use. That way you can keep your host machine from grinding to a halt or one container from stealing resources from other containers. If this is helpful, give a like, subscribe for more. If you're interested in LXC at all, I think this is like a hugely important upcoming technology in Linux and it's gonna replace a lot of what's already there because, it's because of how deeply integrated it is, the kernel and some of the kernel's new features. See you in the next video.